We have done a number of studies over the last couple of years on synovimate. Some of those have already uh, been, been published in, in terms of showing uh, efficacy as, as a group. Uh, we had, uh, there was a, patient by doc, a, a study by Dr. Sperling in 2021 epilepsy that went over the efficacy. There was another study uh, by myself, but again, it's 10 of us, so we just happen to be the first authors uh, on, on uh, lowering some of the concomitant anti-seizure medicines uh, with, with uh, synovimate. Well, what we found from all of those studies, plus the additional abstracts that we've uh, presented at this meeting is that we see efficacy early, uh, often quite early in the first two to four weeks. Uh, we see uh, a lowering of, of all seizure types, often the, the focal to bilateral tonic-clonic seizures being first. This uh, uh, decrease in seizures, both from 50% all the way up to 100% reduction, was, uh, was maintained and sustained over, over time. Uh, and, and we have some of the patients, for example, in our post-hoc analysis that are on a median of, of uh, 29 and a half months on the study uh, and uh, in the maintenance phase. And then what we found was some of them up to, to 40 months. When we looked at, at the data from, uh, from uh, Dr. Sperling's paper, basically, if you take the whole uh, 240 patients that we had in our post-hoc analysis, 25% uh, were seizure-free uh, at the last visit for 12 months or more, with uh, uh, actually a mean of 23 and a half months being seizure-free. So this is significant to patients. You know, we're not just talking 50, 75, 90. We're talking often 100% seizure reduction. If you looked at any 12-month period, patients were, had been seizure-free 30, 30, uh, uh, 36%. Now, what was interesting is there was also very good retention. 73.8% of the patients were still taking the, the drug 177 out of the 240 at the end of, uh, of our, our data collection, which was at the end of a mean of, of 29 and a half months. If you take their, those patients, the number that was seizure-free was even higher. It was 33% seizure-free uh, at 12 months or more, again, with a, with a, uh, a mean of of uh, uh, 23 and a half months seizure free. And as many as 46% of the folks have been seizure free for 12 months or more. What we also learned from this, and, and part of that is published in uh, the paper that I mentioned uh, uh, myself, Rosenfeld et al, uh, in terms of our, our 10 groups. What we found was that, that not only uh, uh, did we see good efficacy, but we can even improve on tolerability. Tolerability uh, was, was quite good, but, but there were a few side effects that happened with the drug. Uh, some people got a, a little bit of dizziness and some patients got a little bit of sleepiness. What we found was that the way to alleviate that, and because it was an open label study, we were able to lower concomitant drugs. Uh, we found that if patients were sleepy, it was most often if you happen to have been on clobazam or phenobarbital. And by lowering those drugs fairly early, proactively, we could, uh, we could uh, cut those side effects significantly, cut it probably in half. Uh, in terms of dizziness, what we found is the two drugs uh, that we found that we, uh, we often lowered were, were phenytoin uh, uh, and the other was leucosamide. Of those three drugs I mentioned, most of it is because of 2C19, because synovimate affects 2C19, phenytoin levels uh, would, would go up. Clobazam, the N-desmethyl level, would go up. Phenobarbital would go up. By lowering those drugs proactively, we were able to, uh, to uh, uh, lower side effects, sometimes you know, in, half, in half or more uh, by, by doing such. And so I think the drug is very well tolerated. Uh, there's a few little uh, side effects that you need to, to watch for if you happen to be on those drugs. If you're on most of the other drugs, uh, you know, then you, you didn't need to be proactive. You could just, if there was any side effect, uh, lower the drug. Lacosamide is a little bit different. It is on a pharmacodynamic basis. Levels uh, do not change, but we found with some of the patients who were taking higher doses of lacosamide, uh, 400 milligrams or above, often six, seven, eight hundred milligrams, that those patients 
uh, we often uh, needed to lower by 100 milligrams, perhaps when you got up to about 50 uh, uh, milligrams per day of sonobamate. Remember, we're going up on sonobamate in every other week titration by the accepted. That decreased any uh, or, or mitigated or decreased, lessened the risk of, of DRESS, drug reaction, eosinophilia, systemic symptoms. We're going up by 12 and a half milligrams for two weeks, 25 for two weeks, 50, uh, then 100, and then going up by 50 milligrams every, every two weeks as needed. So with, with doing this, when you get to about 50 milligrams per day of the sonobamate, we started to, to lower the leucosamide by 100 milligrams and perhaps two weeks later uh, by another uh, 100 milligrams. You didn't need to really do it if they were 400 milligrams or less. To make a long story short, I think the, the, the drug has been quite effective. We're no longer talking just 50% reductions. We're talking 75, 90, 100% reductions. And I think the, the side effects uh, uh, are, are relatively uh, on the low side. Uh, cognitive and, and uh, uh, psychiatric side effects are, 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 are low uh, in the 2% you know, range or, or so. And all side effects, you know, even the general side effects of some dizziness or sleepiness can be alleviated depending on which uh, drug you're on. And you can uh, help that by, by decreasing uh, phenytoin uh, and or leucosamide for dizziness and uh, uh, clobazam or phenobarbital for sleepiness and most of the other drugs that were, that were not uh, significant side effects with.